Do you want to love yourself more but you don't know where to start? In this video, I'm going to break down the No BS Beginner Guide to Self-Love. What it really is and the key practice you need to put in place so you can finally love and accept yourself. And let's jump right in. Key number one, before we jump into the tactics and habits, is to understand that all love is self-centered. So don't feel guilty about loving yourself. It's not. Everything, every single thing we experience as love is self-centered because we all experience love differently. It is based on our perspective, on our perception of what others say or what we ourselves do. So all self-love really is, is a move from scarcity where love is limited, where you depend on other people to feel love, to move to abundance, where you can give that love to yourself, where you feel like there's an unlimited amount of love in this world, and I can have as much as I want without taking anything away. So that's all self-love is. You move from scarcity, where you need others to validate you, to abundance, where you love yourself, and that way you fill up your own cup, and you have more love to give to others. That's all it is. That's what you need to understand first about self-love before we can talk about how to actually achieve that feeling of, yeah, I love myself. I fill up my own cup and I can serve others better because I have more love. I have more energy. I have more passion for my life. So that's what the pre-frame to all of this now we are going to get into the tactics and habits you can use to have more self-love in your life. But if we haven't met already, hi, I'm Eric Matzen. I'm a leadership and life coach. And here in this channel, we talk about productivity, wellness, self-love, relationships, and all about creating a great life in general. So if you're into that, make sure that you smash that subscribe button down there, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos, and if you like this description, this definition of self-love already, make sure that you smash that like button so more people are going to see this video in the YouTube algorithm. But now let's go deeper. So self-love is self-centered, of course, but it is not self, it's not selfish. It is selfless. It is of service. Because if you have great energy, if you feel love, and you don't need others to feel that love, of course you're going to show up better for other people in your relationship. But what is like self-love really? How do you achieve that state? Well, first and foremost, we need to understand that self-love needs to be unconditional. It needs to be the unconditional acceptance of who you are, including all your flaws, all your weaknesses, all your mistakes. Because real, true love whether you want to love yourself or someone else, always needs to be unconditional. I mean, think about it. You don't have love your partner. You don't have love your kid. You love all of it. So you need to learn how to love all of who you are, knowing, yeah, you, in, my, in some areas, you might want to change. You might want something better. Of course you want. Of course you have ambitions. Of course you have dreams but that doesn't diminish your own value right here. Self-love is realizing, yeah, I have more dreams, I have more ambitions, but I'm good in this moment right now. I can love myself right now, even if I don't have the intimate relationship I want, even if I don't achieve the success already, even if I don't have this or that or this or that, I can love myself right now knowing that I want more in life. So that's key number one to understand self-love. It needs to be unconditional, but it's not giving yourself up. It's not like not caring about your future. Of course you do. It's just an acceptance of, yeah, I'm good in this present moment. And this is so key. This is so key. So now let's get into the habits and tactics to really achieve this self-love, to achieve this feeling of, yeah, I'm good. So key number one, what changed my life was meditation. Like this is so common today, but 
Many people have this fear of meditation, but meditation changed my life because before that, I often bemoan myself. I often I was stuck in self-loathing because I felt like I'm too shy, I'm not confident. There was other people that were more charismatic and I was so driving my own self-worth from the outside perspective of what I thought other people were thinking of me. But meditation like, taught me how to change perspective. It taught me how to see myself from the viewpoint of someone else. And it taught me, oh man, there's so much to appreciate about myself. So meditation is a game changer. You can also do journaling, affirmations, whatever works for you. But you need to have some practice that will allow you to get into the state regularly, where you see yourself differently, where your identity just changes. Key number two, and this is really practical, is to appreciate yourself regularly and then to integrate your wins. So here's what I mean. Every single evening, I sit myself down before I go to sleep and I write down three things that I'm grateful for. And I write down three things, no, not three things, three wins I had. And here's what that does. Firstly, I appreciate my life. I appreciate what I do have in my life. I have reverence for life. And then secondly, I integrate my power. See, many people, they're stuck in feeling so low in themselves because they never celebrate their wins. They only see their shortcomings. They only see their failures. And they never take a moment to realize, man, I've done so much. I've achieved so much already. I can be proud of myself. Many people, they delay that feeling of being proud of oneself because they feel like they're not enough. They haven't achieved enough. They haven't done enough. But you need to integrate your wins because more confidence, it comes from practice. It comes from living congruently. But it also comes from simply celebrating your wins, integrating them into your own being. And when I talk about this practice, it's important to note it's not enough to just think about it. When you think about what you're grateful for, when you think about what you're proud of, you need to feel that emotion. You need to feel it in your heart. So you need to get in your heart for this practice. I mean, you could say, yeah, I'm really proud. I'm a great parent. But you need to relive a moment. You need to relive an experience. I feel like, okay, in that interaction with my daughter, oh, man, yeah, I did the right thing. It wasn't easy, but it, it, I did the right thing. That changes it. I feel it right now. I moved from my head into my heart right now. I can feel it. I can feel that moment. And that changes everything. So when you think about what you're grateful for, when you think about what you're proud of, you need to feel that too. And many people, they try to think themselves into new thoughts but it doesn't work because your feelings dictate your thoughts. So how you feel influences how you think about yourself. So change the feelings you experience on a daily basis and you're naturally going to change how you think about yourself and you're going to see yourself differently. So this is key. Number one, meditation. Number two, simple practice. Every evening, write down what you're grateful for and what you're proud of. Key number three, and this is something that is really tough sometimes, but you need to let go of the past. You need to forgive yourself for past mistakes, for past hurts, for past trauma, for anything that you did that you are holding yourself against. That is really, like really important. If you want to love yourself, you need to love your past because it brought you where you are right now. I mean, think about this. You are here in this moment. You're watching this video. You're working on yourself. That is a true achievement already because most people don't do this. They don't work on themselves and they're not setting themselves up to win in the future. But oftentimes, even though you know you want to change something, you still bemoan your, like your past. You still feel like, you didn't do the right thing and you hate your past. You hate on you, how you did that. But you need to love your past knowing it brought you to this moment 
and it's going to serve you in the future. I mean, for a long time, I didn't appreciate my past either. Like I was that shy and insecure kid who got laughed at, bullied, rejected all the time. And I didn't like it. I didn't like how I responded in those situations as a teenager, a young adult. But then firstly, I learned meditation. But then secondly, I also learned, yeah, that journey, it is in unique to me. And it brought me to this moment where I can start teach to others what I've learned, what I've gone through. So if I share this, you don't have to go through the same as I did. So I can use my past, which wasn't great. I can use my past to build a better future and to help others. I mean, when you shift into service, when you shift into future building, when you fit, shift into vision and just creating your life, when you go back into the driver's seat, you start to see your past differently. So think about how could my past serve me? The mistakes I did, the lessons I've learned, how could they serve me? How can I extract that knowledge? How can I extract those experiences and use them in the future, either to help others or for my own future, for my own vision or both? So this is critical. And then the last key habit or practice that you need to do in order to really love yourself. And this is so basic, but it is so critical. You need to keep the promises you make to yourself. I already mentioned that confidence comes from living congruently with yourself. And so often we self-sabotage ourselves because we know we should be doing this, but instead we're doing this. So in the moment, in the present moment, we are sabotaging ourselves knowing we want something different, but we don't do it. But when you want more confidence, more self-love, more appreciation for yourself, you need to start keeping the promises you make to yourself and shift to a long-term focus. Because so often we self-sabotage simply because it is easier in the present moment and we don't have that long-term perspective, the long-term view. So what you need to do is first paint out a vision, paint out a future, paint out a goal of how you want to feel each and every day about yourself. This is critical. Most people, they've never defined how they want to feel about themselves on a daily basis. And that's why they always take what's like life given them. But you get to create the emotions you want to experience. It is up to you. So you need to define how do I want to feel? And then secondly, you need to define what do I need to do today? to create that emotional reality. I mean, here's another truth. Self-love, it won't sh show up today. Like if you feel like you're not really there, it won't happen today. It's a consistent practice. You need to do it today and tomorrow, and next week and next month. I mean, I recently published a video and someone posted below there. I wasn't sure what the video was on, but someone posted in the comment section, I tried but I still can't. Well, if you just watch the video, it's not going to change right now. I mean, that's a truth in personal growth. You need to do it consistently over and over and over and over again. And slowly, but gradually, you're going to change. You're going to be different. At some point, you might not even notice that you're changing. Yeah, that's just me. But from day on day on day on day, when you look back three months from now on today, I promise you, if you do these practices, you are going to be different. You're going to look back and you can see, oh, this is where I was. And now see where I am. That's also a form of learning how to appreciate your past. You see how far you've come. You take a moment and you realize, okay, here I am today. And maybe it's not the greatest place. Maybe I don't love where I am. But look where I was a year ago, or three years ago, or 10 years ago. Look how much I've learned. And it will give you so much for your own feeling of self-love. And if you love this video, then make sure that you smash that like button, subscribe down there, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. What I recommend that you do next, 
watch this video on how to really trust yourself. And I think that will really serve you. And then until the next time, make sure that you live fully, live openly, and be the leader of your life.